Hey folks, this is Grease Scotsman. Welcome to the Miro SDK Primer on using Blender to create level geometry. Open a new general project in Blender. Delete the camera and the light. Download a typical humanoid model from Mixamo, like the mannequin, as that model is pretty much the same size as Ford and will be useful to bring into the scene for a scaling sanity check. At the top of the screen, click the modeling tab. This will remove the extraneous screen elements like an animation timeline that's visible in the layout view so you can just focus on creating level geometry. By default, you will be in objects mode, which provides ways to scale, move, and rotate entire objects. Press G for move mode, R for rotation mode, and S for scale mode. You can also move, scale, and rotate objects by setting exact numbers for each property by clicking the transform tab, the orange square icon, found on the right-hand side of the Blender window. Blender is renowned for having an odd and sometimes confusing interface. They jettison a number of common conventions that other programs use as staples. One of the most jarring differences is manipulating the view. To pan the view, hold shift and middle click and then drag. Instead of being able to right click and drag to pitch and yaw the view, this is done by holding and dragging the middle mouse button. This pivot is based off of the center point of the current view and the view will orbit around that imaginary point as you move the mouse. Scrolling the mouse will increase or decrease the zoom of that view to and from that imaginary point. This can be very unintuitive at first. To step into controls that may be more familiar, Blender has a fly slash walk mode that enables navigation that is similar to a typical first person shooter. By default, the keybind for this mode is shift tilde, or accent grab for our European friends. A small crosshair will appear in the center of the screen when in this mode. The mouse will pitch and yaw the view in typical FPS fashion and WASD will allow moving forward, back, strafe left, and strafe right. The Q and E keys will move the view up and down. Simply left click to exit this mode. The keybind used to toggle the walk slash fly mode can be set in the edit preferences menu. Before we start making cool stuff, we'll do a few things to prevent us from going insane. The first is to love the grid and to set a sensible grid interval and to force blender objects to always snap to the grid no matter what you're doing with them. This will save you endless hours of frustration and tedium because you will not be fighting the sloppiness that comes with just eyeballing whether two meshes are lined up. You will know it thanks to the grid snap. Also, if you're building something indoors, there's usually an expectation that floors are level and doorways are more or less properly aligned. I recommend moving the default cube so that the center of its bottom face resides at 0, 0, 0 as this face is going to become our floor. Use the scale X and Y fields to expand this cube to a 10 by 10 meter mesh. Because the default Blender cube is 2 by 2 meters in size, a scale of 5 in the X and Y yields a 10 by 10 by 2 meter object. Next, switch from object mode to edit mode using the tab key. You can select all faces of the current mesh at any time by pressing the A key. From edit mode, you'll be able to toggle between vertices, edges, and faces of any selected object using the 1, 2, and 3 keys. There are four main workhorse operations that you will use to create most level geometry. The extrude tool, the loop cut, the face or edge drag, and the inset or scale tool. The extrude tool allows you to select a face, edge, or vertex and pull out the shape by that selected element in the direction that you drag the mouse. The loop cut is a way to make clean divisions in the geometry. A common usage is to add doorways and hallway entrances to rooms, but loop cuts also split geometry in ways that can add detail. The face and edge drag is simply an operation that takes existing geometry and pulls a face or edge in a direction to change its shape. The inset operation can be used to shrink a face. This is commonly used to create windows or a vent entrance in a wall. Using this operation on the cylinder is a quick way to scale inward to add detail. The inset cannot be used to scale outward, however. To get the same effect, you can extrude, then, without moving the mouse, click Scale. Scaling down will mimic the inset operation, while extruding and scaling outward will grow the selected face radially. This short primer will only use extrude, loop cut, and face dragging in order to create several rooms and hallways. Begin with a 10 by 10 by 2 cuboid made either through scaling or face dragging. This object can be turned into a small room into which the player can spawn 
by simply taking the outward edges of the cube and flipping them inward. To do this, have the cube selected, click the Mesh menu, then Normals, and Flip. Turning on Wireframe or X-ray mode will allow you to see objects within. It will also mean faces, edges, or vertices obscured behind other faces that are within a drag selection will be included. If X-ray mode is off, only the visible faces will be included in a drag select. If needed, adjust the scaling size to 0.25. Switch to face select mode with the 3 key, and then click the top face of the cube and drag it up 1.25 meters. With the grid at 0.25, this will be moving 5 increments of the grid. We'll now add a hallway to this room using loop cuts. Swap to edge mode by pressing 2 and select a horizontal edge along the negative y axis edge of the cube. Next, press Ctrl R to perform a loop cut. Use the mouse wheel to increase the number of cuts to 2. If your camera zooms in instead, don't worry. You can adjust the number of cuts once you confirm the operation with a left click, and then use the small window that appears in the lower left that lists off details of the most recent operation. This small window can also be made visible using F9. You can select an entire loop cut by alt-clicking on one of its edges. Switch to move mode and then alt-click one of the new edge loops, and adjust the positioning of the loop until it is 1 meter from the center of the room. Repeat the adjustment of the second loop cut, but pull it in the opposite direction from the center of the room. This will create a 2 meter wide hallway. Switching to a top down orthogonal view by clicking the positive Z axis button in the axis rows in the upper right corner of the screen can be very helpful in verifying positions and distances. Select a vertical edge of the cube and perform another loop cut. Position this cut 1 meter down from the ceiling. Switch to face mode. Select the negative Y face that will act as a hallway entrance, and press E to perform an extrude. Pull the mouse along the negative Y axis to create a 5 meter long hallway. Since each grid segment is 0.25 meters, spanning 20 grid squares will equal 5 meters. Extrude this face again in the same direction, but this time pull it twice as far to make a 10 meter long object. Then repeat extrudes on this object to the left, right, and upwards to reshape it into a whole other room that matches the size of the very first one. Take care to select all of the roof faces before extruding the ceiling upward. Extrude to make another hallway, but on the opposite end of the original room. We're going to copy and paste the room that we just created and connect it to this new hallway. But the goal is to show some problems that can arise when trying to duplicate geometry, and then cover how to fix them. From a top-down view, select the room and press Ctrl-C. Note that you will not find any Copy option or Paste option in the right-click Context menu or Edit menu. Even more confusing, pressing Ctrl-V does not paste a copied object. Instead, use Shift-D to duplicate. You may want to zoom your camera out slightly, making it easier to see the target area for the drag, so you can avoid the drag wrapping issue encountered here as I try to move the duplicated room into place. Once placed, if you zoom in close, you'll see that this duplicated object is no longer on the grid, despite all of the settings and care taken to force grid snapping. To fix this, you can select the faces that need to be snapped to the grid, then click the Mesh menu, then Snap, and then Snap to Grid. The next step is to create an opening in the room by deleting the faces of both the hallway and the room. Select each face, press Delete, and then click Faces from the menu that appears. Now to clean up the geometry. Because this room was duplicated and both the hallway and the room had vertices at the hallway entrance, there are now two sets of vertices overlapping each other, where the two pieces meet. To repair this, enter Vertices mode with the 1 key and then drag select all of the overlapping vertices, right click and choose Merge Vertices, and then By Distance. You can verify that this operation was successful by checking the status message at the bottom of the screen that should report the removal of four vertices. The distance that is considered close enough to merge can be changed using F9 after attempting the operation. You can also check a merge was successful by grabbing one of the newly merged vertices and dragging it around, making sure that both the room and the hallway are reshaped. 
This confirms that the two pieces were connected successfully. Because the copy of this room had a hallway entrance at the opposite end, there is now a large hole in the geometry on the other side of the room. To repair this, click the mesh menu, then clean up, and then fill holes. You should not technically need to select the vertices surrounding the hole. Blender will fill in any holes regardless, but I highlighted them here for clarity. Adding detail to geometry is one of the areas where Blender shines. The bevel tool will be used in the level tutorial to create a rounded corner. To demo this, create a new cube using the Add menu and selecting Cube. Note that Blender automatically keeps new geometry as part of the current mesh. To separate it, ensure all faces are selected. Right-click, choose Separate, and then Selection. Within Edit Mode, when multiple objects are in the scene, you can use the icon to the far left of an object's name in the Collections list to change the currently focused object. Ensure the new cube is the focused object. Note that this cube has inherited the original shape's non-uniform scale of 5 by 5 by 1. So if you try to fix that scaling by resetting everything to 1 by 1 by 1, you'll end up with an abomination. To avoid the hassle of trying to fix the scale and resize an odd-looking shape, it is much easier to hit Tab to swap to Object Mode and then create a cube from the Mesh menu. This will automatically create a 1 by 1 by 1 cube with uniform scaling that is its own separate mesh. Let's go ahead and delete this thing. Select this new cube, hit Tab to go back to Edit Mode, and then enter Edge Mode by pressing 2. Click an edge of the cube. Next, perform a bevel using Control b Click and drag the handle away and slightly down to create a chamfer. Confirm the bevel with a left click, and then adjust the segments in the small window in the lower left to 8, and set the width of the bevel to 0 0.5. This should create a neatly rounded corner with equal size faces. Congratulations! You now have enough geometry creation knowledge in Blender to complete the Geometry and Colliders level tutorial. See you in the void.